Hi, quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor <laughs> or a mental health professional or a psychiatrist. I often sound like I'm maybe one, but I'm not. Dr Henderson, I am not. But in the next two episodes, I will be discussing stories which relate to the brain, to the workings of the brain and emotion and mental health. So if you are an expert, great, get in touch. But also remember, I'm not. I'm just a guy telling some stories and trying to do it as responsibly as I can. See it like a dark room. Go on, picture a dark room Okay, and right in the middle, there is a tiny beam of light. Imagine that a person steps in to that beam of light and is visible. And then a second person steps in. And then a third. And now all three people are visible in the light. Arthur. An extremely sophisticated and educated Englishman. Reagan. A Yugoslavian keeper of hate. Alan. A con man. Tommy. An escape artist. Danny, who is afraid of people, especially men. David, aged eight. Christine, aged three. Christopher. He plays the harmonica. And Adelana, a lesbian. Imagine all of them just waiting, just waiting. Welcome to Extraordinary Stories Podcast. Are you good? I am. Alright, let's go with uh, episode two in the same sort of disassociation, disassociative world that I'm working in right now. And let's tell this insane story. Are you ready? Okay. Let's go. William Stanley Milligan was born in 1955 in Miami Beach. Lucky him. Oh man, I wish I'd been born in Miami Beach. <laughs> I'd be like a surfer with like beach curls and a six pack. I'd be like, ooh, look at me, I'm at the beach. But nah, <laughs> I was born in Paisley, the home of cotton mills and rain. <laughs> so William, he was born and he quickly becomes known as Billy. 
Now, Billy's childhood, it was a turbulent one. It was no uh, piece of cake. So his mother, Dorothy, she was a singer in bars and clubs. And that's how she made money. I mean, really, technically, it's how I should be um, you know, making my living out of, out of my voice, really, out of my singing voice. Um, but that's what she was doing. So his dad, well, is that Johnny? It said he didn't particularly like having children. Oh, great. <laughs> well then, okay. That's pretty sad for little Billy. So Billy's mum, she leaves her husband and she moves away. And she meets another man. And then after a year, it doesn't really work out. And she moves back to Billy's dad. You know, the guy who hated being a father. She moves back there. That doesn't work out. So she leaves again for the second time. And this time she meets a man called Charmer Milligan. Now he becomes Billy's stepfather. And at this point Billy is five years old. Chalmer was not a nice guy at all. A beast of a man. A horrible man. And he starts to sexually abuse Billy at five years old. He had an absolutely terrible temper. He had this rage that would come over him. And he took all of that out on Billy. Billy's mother, of course, had no idea this was what was happening. She had no idea that her son was being sexually abused by her husband. No clue that was happening. But then something strange begins to happen in Billy's behaviour. And she is very, very confused. In fact, everyone around Billy is very confused. So at first, they think he's acting and just doing like silly voices, you know, like the way that kids will do like silly, silly voice. I mean, I'm saying kids will do silly voices. I do silly voices all the time. I'm forever being like, <laughs> you over there, what are you doing? I don't know. I don't really know why I do this. I do it all the time. But these silly voices that he's doing, this kind of thing that Billy's exhibiting at the moment, it's it's actually quite alarming for his family. Because what's happening is, as he's doing it, he's utterly becoming a different person. So his whole entire physicality is changing each time. So one minute, right, he can be Billy and the next he can be speaking in a girl's voice sounding completely different and moving completely differently. And then he'll just change back to Billy. And then someone else will appear, someone who's older than the five-year-old himself. So his mum, she is freaking the fuck out. She has no clue what this is. Why all of a sudden is her son using all these different voices and being all these different people? So she takes him to a doctor and the doctor recommends he be seen by a child psychologist. And so the doctor who meets Billy, he says Billy is showing some very disturbing, disturbing signs. In one session with the doctor, all three of Billy's personalities appear. Now, split personality or 
disassociate <laughs> try again <laughs> disassociative identity disso disassa <laughs> disassociative identity mm -mm. <laughs> disasso disassociative identity disorder nailed it yes got it now split personalities or disassociates <laughs> are you kidding me on here are you having a fucking laugh <laughs> disassociative identity disorders they're not new I mean this is 1960 but Doctors had really only read about it. They'd never really seen it happen in front of their eyes. It was one of these things in the medical community that was like, we've heard this is happening, but we're not quite sure what this is. Or like, we kind of think we know the name for it, but we're not entirely sure what that thing is. But that's the diagnosis that Billy was given, he was given a diagnosis of multiple personality disorder. So, Billy's family, well, they now have a name for what Billy is dealing with. And for the next few years, Billy undergoes a lot of visits to doctors and to psychotherapists who are fascinated by his condition. The amount of personalities, which actually I'm not sure that personality is the right word, is it identities I think is a better word. The amount of identities that he's showing are huge. By age 10, Billy now has eight different identities operating in his brain and they can make an appearance at any time. By age 15, Billy is up to 17 different identities. Jeez, oh man, that is tough, that is, that is a fucking, whew, that is a lot going on there. Billy is seen weekly by a psychologist who tries his best to keep hold of all of these personalities and keep track of where they're at. The, the strange thing is, Billy, right, Billy's obviously living with this, right? So he's like, you know, he's going through this all the time. He's able to talk about each one of these personalities in absolute detail I mean like he can describe the life of every one of these and that's where uh, that's why I wanted to look at dissociative disorders because I just find the brain so fucking interesting in that way I mean if we zoom out on that and look at it Billy is 15 he is sitting in a psychiatrist's office and he's able to list 17 different personalities, one by one. And their lives, who they are, what they're like, he can talk about them. And then at any moment, he might suddenly change into being that person. So, you know, just to give you a selection, there's Arthur, the scientist. There's Tommy, the escape artist. There's Christopher, who plays the harmonica. It's so weird. He can list them off like characters in a film or a play or... Yeah. It's just so weird, I think, for doctors at that time because they would be sitting with Billy going, OK, we're having this chat with Billy and then all of a sudden something would happen and he becomes Tommy the escape artist in front of their very eyes. So the work really here for psychologists is, what are the triggers? That's their big question, right? Their big question is, what are the fucking triggers that are making this happen? Like, what, 
what, what's making him be Billy, who's actually 15 years old, in one moment, why is he now the three-year-old girl who's crying? Like, what's like what's happening? What What's triggering that? What's making that moment happen? And that's the work that psychologists set out to do. I think lots of you might have seen... Um, I don't know if it's a film or a TV show. I'm not quite sure. Um, it's it, it called Split with James McElroy. He, I think, p- plays lots of different personalities in it. And I think a lot of it was based on uh, Billy's story. I think it's based on his many, many personalities. So by the time Billy is in his 20s, there are an absolutely staggering 23 different identities inside of Billy that can display themselves at any time. And of course, at the core of it is Billy himself. But the 23 others are waiting in the wings. They're just waiting to emerge the moment that that trigger happens. Psychologists and specialists in multiple personality disorder, they become fascinated with Billy. They start to examine him really closely. And if truth be told, they actually love it when Billy flips between his different personalities. They love it because, you know, for them, it's like, this is amazing. Here is someone with the craziest number of different personalities. Here's someone whose brain is doing something that no one else at the moment is doing. So we need to, there will be, of course there will be, but they don't know anyone else except from Billy. Things that fascinate them are that Billy's different identities range in age so wildly. So you've got a sort of three-year-old girl and you've got a 29-year-old man on the other side of it. And these are all the different identities that Billy goes in and out of. You know, you've sort of got this, like, three-year-old dyslexic girl who cries all the time. But in a minute, he can become Alan, the 18-year-old accomplished artist. And then a minute later, he's 22-year-old Arthur, the British man who is rude and nasty. Then you've got Adelina, the lesbian. When psychiatrists ask about the basics in life, each personality will feel different. So what would happen was the psychologist would set out a set of questions and whenever a new personality appeared, they would ask the same questions just to see what the responses were. So, you you know, a question like, what food do you like to eat? The three-year-old girl would say, I hate food and I don't want to eat. The 18-year-old artist will say it has to be vegetarian. The 22-year-old nasty (laughs) British man would say steak and mushrooms. So they were testing Billy all the time. They were like trying out lots of different experiments on him just to see what could they get to the bottom of with this. So when Billy is 20 years old, his family move to Ohio. So they're living in Ohio and Billy is seeing a new psychologist. A year after his family have moved, there is an incident in Ohio which is shocking and brutal. A young girl, 18 years old, is walking through Ohio University campus when she's kidnapped at gunpoint. She's driven for miles 
taken into a wooded area and she's raped. Horrible, horrible. So a warning goes around at Ohio University that single females should be very careful. Two weeks after that incident, a second female student from the Ohio University is taken at gunpoint by a man and dragged into the woods where she is raped. Okay, by now there is a major panic. I mean, Ohio are like, there is a serial rapist on the loose. The two girls have given a description to the police, but there is no luck in finding the attacker. One month later, a 19-year-old female student is walking through the grounds of Ohio University when a man stops her and he asks for direction to the nearest library. They begin to chat and he says, let's go for coffee. She agrees. She thinks he seems really nice. Two hours later, the man rapes her at gunpoint in the woods. Mm. So who was this rapist? Well, it was Billy. By the time the third girl, the coffee date girl, comes to police, Billy is already being tracked. The sketch of him is drawn by the police sketch artist and it's making its way into newspapers and it's being shown around town. Have you ever wondered what you might look like in one of those? <laughs> I have. <laughs> I mean, I I'm, I really don't want to be looked for by police for anything, but uh, I often think if I was to, if I was to appear in the newspaper as a sketch by police. How would that look? <laughs> would I look fabulous? <laughs> or would it look like, oh my God, what a creepy fuck. <laughs> Get him locked up forever. <laughs> yeah, I almost, I'm so intrigued to know what I would look like. <laughs> Using the sketch and the information from the girls, they track down Billy. They arrest him, and now, Billy with his 23 personalities is charged with three counts of rape. And because he had a gun at each crime, attempted murder. So what happens is psychologists try to intervene and they say, look, Billy, Billy is unique. He has a condition like no other. But police say, well, all right, we get that, but let's look at the facts. What we have here is straight up sexual assault. So, the case goes to court, and here is where Billy's story becomes truly extraordinary. Sitting in court, the three rape victims all identified Billy as their attacker. Now, there's no denying here Billy is the rapist. No one's denying this fact at all. But the defence team, they think, the fact that Billy has these different identities is the way to get Billy off. So they put him on the stand and they ask, Billy, did you 
commit these rapes. Billy says, no. I have no memory of ever meeting these females. His defence say, okay, but they all are pointing at you as the rapist. And Billy says, it was one of my other identities. Okay, so now the whole courtroom is listening. And at this point, <laughs> everyone's basically doing a what the fuck face. The defence ask, okay, then who was it? Billy says it was Adelena. Alright, so who is Adelena? Adelena is the lesbian identity that Billy has. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, what the fuck? Billy's now saying Adelina, the lesbian, raped the three girls. Billy's asked, was there anyone else present? Was Tommy, the escape artist, around to witness this? Was... Arthur, the 22-year-old British man, was he there? And Billy says no. It was just Adelina. So here's what it comes down to. Billy is saying, I didn't commit these rapes. Adelina did. I mean, the court case, you can imagine. The court case is a circus at this point. This kind of testimony had never been used before in court. Never been used. And of course, there is nothing, there is nothing funny about mental health or mental disorders. Of course there's not. But look at it from the outside. A man who has clearly raped three women at gunpoint is saying, it wasn't me, it was my lesbian identity. So, I mean, I'm not doubting, I'm not doubting for one second that Billy had these other identities. You know, from the age of five, it's been registered that Billy was displaying all manner of other identities. But you can see that under the harsh light of a courtroom, this all just sounds very bizarre. But the outcome is this. Billy is found not guilty. He's found not guilty on the grounds that it was one of Billy's other personalities, one of his other identities, who committed this crime and not him. This was, and that's why I'm telling you this story, this was the first case in the world where someone was found not guilty due to dissociative disorder. Billy, I mean, of course, he wasn't he wasn't set free. He wasn't just allowed to just go back to normal life. He was found not guilty, but he was ordered to live in a high-security psychiatric ward in Ohio. The judge who was looking onto this case said, simply put, I couldn't send that man to prison. He would either kill himself or be killed within days. His mental state is too unpredictable. You never know which one of Billy's personalities might show up. So Billy entered the psychiatric unit as the three-year-old girl with dyslexia and he spent the first 24 hours 
crying and banging his head against the wall. Staff had to wrap him in a blanket and move him into solitary confinement. During which time, he changed into Tommy the escape artist (laughs) and was able to get free of the blanket and was running around the prison with guards chasing him. Billy got into all sorts of trouble in the facility he was in when he constantly moved between personas, personalities, identities. As the British man, Billy would be verbally abusive to staff and then, you know, an hour later, he would have absolutely no idea what he'd done wrong. He would sometimes become the 18-year-old artist and he would start smoking in his room which was completely forbidden forbidden <laughs> which was completely forbidden but again billy would be confused why were staff upset with him he continued to be examined by sakal hi there if i could just uh, try this in english that would be marvelous So he continued to be examined by psychologists who just thought Billy was the most bizarre case they had ever seen. Of Billy's 23 personalities, 10 of them were the most prevalent. The 10 were Arthur the Englishman, Reagan the Yugoslavian hater, Alan the Conman, Tommy the escape artist, Danny who was afraid of people, especially men, David aged eight, Christine aged three, Christopher who played the harmonica, and Adelina the lesbian rapist. And of course, Billy. Billy remained in a psychiatric ward for years and his story was told around the world. What made Billy's story so unique is that doctors would say that each time he took on one of these new identities, it wasn't just a small shift in Billy's voice or, you know, just a little change It was entirely a new person sitting in front of you. One doctor called it embodying the soul of others. He said that Billy would literally change so radically in front of your eyes that you couldn't ever believe Billy had actually ever been sitting there. That if the three-year-old girl appeared, you utterly just went, Oh my God, it's a three-year-old girl in front of me. And Billy was gone in that moment. What triggers all of those changes? Well, that's where psychologists tried to get to for years, for so many years with Billy, but they could never find the rhyme or the reason or what those triggers were. Something just snapped in Billy and he suddenly became... A different identity. One thing that doctors did know is that at the very, very mention of sex, Billy would change into one of his younger personalities and he would immediately start saying sex was dirty, sex was unclean. And perhaps, you know, psychologists will say that's maybe a bit of a key into what it is that sexual abuse at age five years old This is where this all started. Maybe he just retreated into himself and that's where all of these personalities began. Billy was released from the psychiatric ward in 1991 after years of being locked up. His identities by that point had gone from 23 to 3 And doctors felt confident that he could manage himself. 
So he started his own production company and he wanted to make films about his own journey with mental health, but these never came to much. In 2011, 10 years after being released, Billy was diagnosed with cancer and it was terminal. He was taken to a nursing home in Ohio in 2014 and at age 59, Billy died. Billy Milligan will go down in history as the man who was found not guilty on three counts of rape due to another identity having carried out the acts. His story is so unique because when Billy died, a group of doctors who treated him throughout his life got together and they asked, look, what is this case? Can this all be true? Is it possible? that he didn't know he had committed these crimes or is this just one massive hoax? And each specialist said the same thing. Billy Milligan was so shocked to discover that one of his personalities was capable of rape. One doctor said, I have never seen a case like Billy's where each persona is so real and so vivid and yet it's possible that one of Billy's other identities committed these crimes. Even five years after his death, the case of Billy Milligan and his 23 personalities still continues to remain one of the most curious cases of disassociative disorder. And so ends the story. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the story of Billy, Billy Jean is not my lover. Um, yeah, so that was the story of Billy. It's just, yeah, it's another, oh, it's another part of the disassociation thing that I'm fascinated with at the moment. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fascinated with it, but I am. So that's what that is. Uh, if you want to get in touch, please do. You can email me. Extraordinary Stories Podcast at gmail.com, Twitter, Instagram. Join the Facebook group. You know you want to join the Facebook group, so why have you not done it yet? Just, yeah, go on with it. I hope you enjoyed these episodes. And I'm off now to work on the next episode, so until I speak to you again. Okay. Goodbye. It didn't. It didn't affect me really one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs>